What a week at the world's largest tech and startup event right here in Dubai, Jitex Global 2024. Yes, over 6,500 exhibitors, 1,800 startups, 1,200 investors, and over 150,000 visitors. Cutting edge technology from top companies across the world from cybersecurity, data and cloud computing to robotics. Well, this could be familiar, but I even have something which is actually more interesting, humanoid robotics. I'm just doing a short interview. We're just doing a short interview. If you'd like Good. to step back, you can come here later. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sorry. We're filming from this I'm side. I'm actually serious. Sorry. Yeah. That's the reason. Uh, yeah. 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 There's a camera there. Do you need to move? Okay. <laughs> a little more. <laughs> Great. How, how are you, sir? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. My name is Elijah from Kenya. Elijah from Kenya. Yeah. Do Nairobi you... by chance? Oh, you know Nairobi. What do you know about Kenya? Well, I think I spoke to your colleague who is from Nairobi. Well, you have good memory, sir. Yeah, it's programmed to remember the last 10 minutes or so. Okay. What do you know about Jitex Global 2024? JITEX Global 2024. Well, it's one of the largest tech events, currently taking place from October 14th to 18th at the Dubai World Trade Center. Edi Salat by EN has a significant presence, showcasing its cutting-edge technologies, including 5G advancement, IoT, and innovations in AI and smart city solutions. Oh, good stuff there. Maybe as we wrap up, you can say hi to my people back in Kenya. What would you tell them? Of course. Where's the camera? Right there. All right. I'll try to focus. To everybody in Kenya, hello from Dubai. And have a great JITEC 2024. OK, bye. Goodbye. Take care. Thank you. We have a high fidelity face with 27 motors powering the motions and movements which allows our mesmers like Alray to be very expressive in the way they interact with people. And our robots are used as an artificial body for artificial intelligence technologies. So if you have a fantastic AI system, maybe something that helps people, it's much more natural for them to talk to that system through something that looks like a person, like we're doing now, than to type at a keyboard and use a mouse. So our robots find applications with research institutes, with universities, with companies around the world who are working on the latest in, in AI technologies. And we also take them to events and shows where they always attract a crowd and not many people have had the chance to talk to a full-size humanoid robot. So you'll see there's a lot of attention behind us. Our humanoid robots are not designed to replace people or take people's jobs. They complement us, they uh, assist us in, in work that we're doing. They have uh, great applications. Wherever you want to repeat the same information where you don't want a person having to do the same thing over and over again, uh, you can have a robot that can access AI can interface with any sort of system and become the friendly face to that. In the future, we will see more robots, robots like our Mesmer robots here, interacting with people, entertaining them, uh, giving out information. Anywhere where you want uh, to communicate with a system, but in a human-like way, like we're doing now, through faces, through 
non-verbal uh, communication, not through a, a keyboard and a mouse or a touchscreen. We can connect to any sort of large language model, like ChatGPT is a good example. All these models are trained on billions of data points uh, from conversations on the internet, from various websites, from uh, all sorts of data sources. So at the time that the large language model is created and trained, it will have information about a huge range of topics that can be accessed through our robots. Away from the humanoid robots, imagine cruising through the streets in a sleek sports car, then seamlessly taking off. This futuristic vision may soon become a reality. Flying cars are here with us. This is our Evito flying car. It can take off vertically and uh, it, it can take off and land in vertically. Um, this, this is our uh, concept car. We will not uh, mass product this car in the near future, but in uh, maybe a, a, at least uh, eight or to ten years. We still have another uh, flying car which will be mass produced in one and a half years. We call it the modular flying car. The modular flying car will separate it in will be separated in two parts. First is the ground module, and then another one is the uh, air module. The two parts can combine and uh, can combine and separate automatically. And this uh, modular flying car will be uh, start the precious at the end of this year. The car have two modes. First is the uh, road drive modes. You can drive this car just like a very cool racing car. All the arms and propeller will be uh, combined into the car automatically. And you will not see anything uh, about, uh, uh, about the flying uh, exteriors. And uh, when you want to make the uh, EV2 take off and landing, you can open the arms and propeller and take off vertically. Uh, maybe now the, the biggest challenge is the power. The pure electric power is not, uh, the, uh, the, the range is not long enough. So we will make more effort on the power. The secondly is the flying control systems. We will make it more safe, more uh, uh, sufficient, and we, we, we should pay more attention on the control systems. We're exhibiting the air scooter. Uh, the air scooter is a hybrid electric VTOL, so VTOL means a vertical takeoff and landing. Uh, it's considered an ultralight in the USA, which means that you don't need a pilot's license to operate. Uh, it follows the FAA rule uh, part 103. Um, so thanks to the hybrid powertrain, you're able to fly for up to two hours. Uh, so the combustion engine um, they provide the trust and they also allow to recharge the batteries during the flight, which means that when you land, you don't need to recharge. All you need is to put more fuel and then uh, you're up to go again. It's a, it will be sold for 200,000 US dollars uh, to own the air scooter, but what we want to do is actually democratize the, the idea of flying, the concept of flying, uh, because we're going to open flight centers, uh, hopefully all over the world, but Firstly in the USA, I think the first one will open in Vegas and people can come in and pay per flight experience. So after just one hour of training on the simulator, uh, they're able to hop on and take to the sky. And the experience should be sold for about uh, 300 or 500 US dollars. So I think this is more affordable uh, and uh, the idea is to allow anyone to have a, a new experience of flying, to be their own pilot basically. Running for over four decades, the Jitex brand has grown in leaps and bounds. For some years, it has now filled the entire Dubai World Trade Center complex and currently expanded with additional halls. And as the week-long Gulf Information Technology Exhibition, commonly known as Jitex, comes to a close here in Dubai, it will be interesting to see how African countries 
Kenya included, will seize the opportunities that are presented by such events in the coming days. My take home, the world is changing and so should we. From the capital of the Emirate of Dubai, my name remains Elijah Mondi.